Hello, this is Damian Kirk, back for my third video in my series of videos explaining my Minecraft processor, data path and control unit. This part is going to be on the control unit. Uh, it should be a pretty quick one. You see, um, last time I explained that these bits coming out, these values coming out of these lines at the bottom are the instruction, and I also have explained that um, the first three bits are always the opcode, so you can see those three that are coming out with it, which is uh, 101 right now. These three bits go over into this, which is the control unit. And you can see, uh, once again, that I use this repeating um, redstone ladder structure with the half slabs so that uh, the signal gets sent up to a lot of different places. You can see it uh, goes through to here, it comes out here, uh, it comes out there, and that's just this one on the left. Um, as for what it actually is doing here, it's just various different uh, like combinational logic to determine whether these signals are on depending on which instruction it is. So this first one at the bottom I'm pretty sure is the uh, register destination line and uh, determines based on what's input here which uh, which register is going to be written to if we're writing. If it's an instruction where we're going to write to a register. I'll just get, get stuck in here a little sometimes. So uh, this line, let me fly again. Urgh. Okay, so this line comes to here, which uh, affects, basically this is a multiplexer that's deciding between the three values that are coming in the bottom or the three values that are coming in the top. I'll probably talk a little more about this when I do my video on the register file, but basically it's just picking either the second register specified or the third one to be the right destination, because on an add immediate instruction you need it to write to a register that's specified in different bits than the, the rest of uh, the instructions. And then you can also see on this same control line there's this redstone torch here uh, where the signal's negated and then sent out along with these. And this goes to the ALU and it just uh, it is the ALU source control line because it just happened to be going to be the opposite of, of this one. So I'll explain that one more when I get to the video on the ALU. but. So that's going to determine whether it's uh, the ALU takes input from the second read register or the immediate values. Um, so you can see how those, you know, changing would be kind of go hand in hand with the add immediate instruction. Which in this case, this is the one state for the one state that really matters where uh, it's like this. Normally, for most instructions, it would be this line would be on, and that one would be off. But Right now we have 101, which is an add immediate, because that's the first instruction of the program that I have loaded right now. Uh, the next one up here, I believe, is B negate. Again, that's um, that's going to be, you know, cover that more when I get to the video on the ALU. But you can see that it's it. Uh, this actually uses a couple different layers of this. So this is a uh, one of the gates that's saying this and not this, and then uh, up here there's another one. So it's if either of these you know, uh, results is true, then this one then this line will be on. So that'll be on for, you know, subtraction and set less than, things like that, branching to generate the zero value, the zero output. Oh uh, these next few or these next couple I think are the ALU control lines themselves that are determining whether we're looking at the less output or the adders or the and and ors. Um, Again, it's just combinational logic, AND gates, OR gates, maybe some XOR, this is an XOR. It's just determining whether these lines should be on. Um, let's see, this one right here. Hold on, if I can just get through here. Oh, I missed one. This one is actually the register write. Yeah, this is telling you whether you need a write to a register on this instruction. And so this goes down here. Okay, trust me, this is the same line. It gets a little bit crowded in here. But this line comes down here. It gets anded with the clock signal. So if this is an instruction where we're writing to a register and the clock is pulsing right now, then this AND gate will let a signal through. And that signal gets anded with the actual write values from this multiplexer, uh, the, you know, the register number that we're writing to, and gets output into another decoder, which I'll talk more about when I get to that video. But, um, and then, what, 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 okay, this one up here is the branch signal, so this is only on when the opcode is 110, telling you that it's a branch if equal or branch if not equal. 
So this uh, will go over there to the branching hardware, which, you know, I'll cover what it actually does, but, you know, it, this is just telling the, the program counter and the branching hardware whether this is a, an instruction where we might branch. Um, and then this is the print line, which is the same kind of thing. It's only on when the opcode is 111, which is a print instruction, and it gets anded with the clock again to determine whether it's going to load the value from the register into the printing hardware. So that should be all for this one. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say about the control unit other than just explaining the structure of it and what the actual control lines are doing. And then, but this is obviously a very important part of the, the whole thing, taking the opcode and actually, you know, telling the, the hardware what to do with it. So, yeah, that's it for this one. I will be back later to talk about branching hardware over there. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.